Okay, so this is a Free Wild World podcast, and we're speaking to John Bauer. He's a ceramic artist, and uh, it's also an African taxi podcast. We're doing a project together. He's my main benefactor for the African taxi project. So this is just a nice chat with John, and we're going to discuss the other project as well. So John, uh, give us your origin story. Tell us a bit. So, yeah, I mean, I was very lucky uh, when I was 12. Um, I was bad at everything, um, significantly bad. Um, I even went for balance therapy because I'd fall over in the wrong way or something like that. I had eye hand coordination therapy and every kind of thing to try and uh, bring me up to speed. And still, I'm a loon. Um, but the thing is, when I got given a ball of clay, the teacher took my father aside and said, you've got to, you've got to get him into an environment where there's clay. He's got a very special talent. And that essentially was my only special talent ever discovered because on everything else, I am like a soaked up weasel, unable to get any traction with anything. So, you know, it's great that I have clay because that gives me something that I can excel at. And uh, I'm making some bead pendants here. And what I love about these, these pendants is I have various travelers that I give beads to. And the, the way that they pay for them is by sending me videos of them trading the beads for their needs. It's, it's for me, it's, it's so wonderful because I get to, you know, although I might not be a trillionaire, I get to facilitate people in pursuing their dreams by some miracle I'm able to pursue my dream. Look at me, sitting here with a piece of wire in my hand, a clay disc, Oh, very nice, very nice. Look at that one, look at that one. My golly. So I, I, I looked at the, one of the YouTube videos this morning just about ceramics, but ceramics is... What is ceramics exactly? What can it be? So ceramics essentially, um, I see it as, as once AI has replaced all, all jobs yeah. on Earth. Uh, we, will only, <laughs> we will only have priests and potters. And essentially, pottery is great because almost anyone can go into their back garden, dig a hole, find some clay. And it's low impact. Um, you know, we're not digging down to the earth's mantle layer and extracting some rare mineral for um, cell phone battery. We are purely just taking mud and seeing if we can trick the mud into looking spectacular. And that's what I am. I am essentially calling out of the mud. I'm saying, I want you to not look like mud. I want you to give me an illusion of something else. So for instance, this is a embroidered cushion cover and I look at it and I go well that not only is a good illusion but it's a good representation of the original object and it's gonna last you know 10,000 years whereas the actual cushion cover will be eaten by moths and disappear okay I'm gonna bring something else in here apparently yeah. some origin stories um, say people came from mud I don't know if you've come oh, many do yeah, many do actually. So, is there like this creative process in creating something new from just mud? So, there's some kind of strange connection there, maybe? Or? Well, I think anybody being creative kind of naturally kind of inhales a sense of peace, inhales a, a part of the creation. Um, you know, creativity is almost like a radioactive medicine. It's like a, um, 
Uh, yeah, being creative is like chemotherapy for the soul. Yes. It's great. Um, but I want to go back to your childhood. Yeah. If we can dig a little bit deeper into that. So how did it make you feel? I mean, you must have known you are a bit different, um, obviously. And how did it make you feel? How did it affect your confidence as a person? So, so failing at so many things obviously does affect your, your confidence. Um, and, and thus, being good at this one thing, it enabled me to, you know, really singularly get on that horse and gallop and gallop and give it all I've got. Um, and, you know, I, I approach Clay with a, a level of fanaticism. Um, I, 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 I personally experienced a huge amount of healing through Clay. Um, and, you know, when I meet people, I say, oh, you know, just go into Facebook Marketplace, buy a kiln, get a bag of clay, get going. Because um, life's, life's short. You should do things that build your soul. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of felt like an idiot until I was 37. And then I went to a neuropsychologist who told me that people can't understand me because the level of inventiveness that my brain is generating is so hyper-inventive um, that I, I, I lose people and I exhaust people and that I actually have this incredible gift and I should invent, invent, invent. I see Paul Upson. Hey, 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 how are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, how is Australia? How's the the new job going? How how is the country of many a South Africans' dream? For the people that's gonna watch the podcast on YouTube, this podcast will be on YouTube. So I'm saying yes. we're also doing a live stream for John on Facebook, right? Yeah. So if John starts speaking to his phone, he's actually <laughs> speaking not to imaginary. <laughs> Dwarfs here, yeah. speaking to his audience. Uh, I've never done it like this. This is actually quite nice. So, <laughs> for the people yeah, that must are, be really confusing for them. Like, <laughs> now no, we know. Yeah. So, for the people that are watching the live thing, it's like I'm doing a series of podcasts with artists now. It's one of the things I do. I do many things, vlogs as well. And you're welcome to go watch it. Check it out. It's YouTube, and uh, the channel is Free Wild World. You'll get vlogs, and this podcast should be there, up there in a few days. And that brings me to the next little project I'm doing with John. Uh, a few years ago, I had this idea to travel through Africa with minibus taxis because I traveled in Mozambique and Malawi with minibus taxis. And it's such a unique way of experiencing Africa because you're in between the, the hustle and the bustle and it's uncomfortable and sometimes a bit dangerous, but it's exciting. And you meet the real people. It's a real raw way of seeing Africa. And John is helping me to do more of this. So eventually I wanted to go straight through Africa, but that's not practical now. So I'm going to do weekend trips, taking minibus taxis to places and recording videos, vlogs and interviews, people, podcasts in towns. And that's all going to be on the YouTube channel. And there's a separate channel just for that, which is called African Taxi. So if you're wanting to promote your small town, yeah. what you can do is you can message Chris and say, hey, come to our town, come and do some videos. And, um, you know, you could even sweeten the deal by saying you know like we'll we'll give you some free accommodation or you could sweeten the deal by even saying and we'll cook you dinner um he also plays the guitar amazingly and sings so you could even say hey come do a gig in our town and then interview a few artists yes. um, i can also play unplugged okay unplugged that's what I did with the previous thing. I can play in somebody's, you can do a little gig in somebody's house and if, invite a few friends and I'll do a gig like that. And I'll play for that. Like a bra. Yeah. Like a bra and I'll yeah. play to some music. And also John S Ceramics travels everywhere with me and we can do a John Bauer installation, which will be part of the project. And you have a John Bauer little thing at your place that will be on the map as how the African taxi project grows. It will be all over the place on the map. There will be this John Bauer installation. So we send uh, to your small town some matchbox tiles that Chris puts up. And um, that then becomes part of the global route. So you can look on Google Maps and say, where, where are the nearest John Bauer tiles? And then go to that site and look at them. 
And as more people travel um, haphazardly and chaotically, you know, I like the idea of people just, it's like falling down a staircase. It's random, it's uncurated, it's just long. life as it is. Yeah. And what happens, happens. Uh, it's not overproduced. It's just what happens and it's a surprise and a reveal and nobody knows what's going to happen. So that was the African Taxi Project and for the podcast viewers I will title all the details in here. I'm starting to develop the website and there will be loads of info there. But let's get back to John Bauer because it's actually this is, podcast is actually supposed to be about John. <laughs> uh, where were we? Yeah, so I mean I was so blessed to discover clay and then I realized there are a lot of potters out there who they, they manically buy chemicals uh, like iron oxide or copper oxide or copper carbonate or cobalt carbonate or cobalt oxide or, you know, silica or feldspar or potash. or There's so many of these, so much of the stuff that is bought in a peak of inspiration and then it sits in a cupboard not being used as people, so many people want to create and they go through many of the steps but they don't actually create and then you know after many years of this these chemicals have to find a new home they they need the space they they might be moving house and they say well you're not going to move all of this stuff and so then i'm gifted with all of these chemicals and that fueled essentially my early career because I removed the cost of failure because everything was given to me for free. And so essentially the more work I made using up these chemicals, I was serving the environment. So I was approaching it with how do I develop my talent, which, you know, I think is a relatively good approach for any person to approach a creative um, experience. And then Secondarily, I was saying, how do I serve the environment? How do I serve my community? How do I serve the future? And then also another thing that's my making philosophy is don't, don't suffer. Because the thing is that when success comes, if you've been suffering in the small time, big time success will kill you because you won't be able to keep up. So work in a way which is peaceful, tranquil, and that embodies the experience that you hope to have. Because essentially, as a creative person, you choose. You are the creator. And you are creating your making experience. So by golly, make sure that it's an enjoyable making experience. No, no patron of the arts wakes up in the morning, every morning, looking at a painting and says, he bled while making that artwork. He lost 40 <laughs> kilograms. He went through hell and I am thrilled. No. They look at a painting and they go, this is the zenith of human civilization. This is the highest state of all humanity. So if you are not experiencing the highest state of all humanity while making your art, you're doing it wrong. And like, I know we shouldn't tell people they are wrong. You know, that's a social faux pas. But I'll I'll happily say to artists who are in a perpetual state of suffering, wrong. <laughs> Thank you. I, knew, I needed to hear that, John, really. I'm <laughs> 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 yeah, making myself suffer so many years. I'm released. Thank you. Absolutely, Thank you, brother. <laughs> Absolutely. You have full permission Thank you. to enjoy your art process. Great. Um, so tell me, do you have a specific process that's unique, the way you do your stuff? Or like yeah, yeah, yeah. So because I needed to use up these chemicals, I started layering um, the, the, the porcelain with dyed layers just to get as much chemical into the matrix as possible. Um, 
Um, in that process, I was using that with a differential shrinkage rate to create bulletproof porcelain because people would often say to me, oh, oh, you know, I'd buy something, but I've got kids. I'm just going to play with it. And you go, don't worry. And then if you can pick up a bowl and knock a nail into a wall uh-huh. with a bowl, which was one of the tricks I used to do. And they go like, oh, oh, oh. Wow, you know, this is this is unbreakable by my kids. And so can we make bulletproof vests out of this for maybe the yeah. wars in the world? Oh absolutely. We need, yeah. a, we need a billionaire to, to pledge for this new project for the new <laughs> job. We can make bulletproof vests of oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, I mean, yeah, like it could be really fantastic, like fish cones. Yeah. And like as people got into the dance floor, there was like a bit of a jingle, a bit of a rustle. You know, people could be called the rattlesnake. <laughs> um, but um, back to, so, so basically in the process of trying to use up these chemicals as quickly as possible because I was being donated so many of them, I invented all kinds of new technologies. Um, one of them is a, is a porcelain that behaves, the closest similar technology would be Polaroid. And so it images whatever you show the clay, which... For me, still, it, it boggles even my mind. Um, and if I hadn't invented it by accident, I would have totally said, this is not a possibility in... in Magical the type of thing. Absolute magic. Okay. And, and it took quite a lot to reverse engineer what was happening um, because the initial images it created were not, um, not photo quality they were more patinations and then working out you know what chemicals I'd added in what ratios to give me those effects Um, and then once I knew that I could actually then kind of lift the bonnet and and say well this is the engine how do we rebore it how how do we optimize it how do we add a bit of uh, a bit more magic? Um, so when you have accidental magic, that's never the optimal uh, point. It's seldom that that you will hit the perfect recipe entirely by accident. So you 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 unlock the potential by accident, but then there's a lot of research. So the door just goes open there, and then it shows a way to open it more. Ab- absolutely, a new adventure, and you yeah. dive in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and now I'm down to being able to even capture a dragonfly's wing. So like like it started out, you know, with a depth of field. Uh, that was sort of two inches, and it's down to now a depth of field um, of, of, say, a quarter or tenth of a millimeter. So it's still progressing. You're still discovering your little nuances. For the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 I never, uh, I never, uh, I never anchor into a past success. So for me. It's super exciting um, spinning that roulette wheel. So I'll often have a piece that's great. I'm so happy, fantastic. It's nice. It's it's good. It's it's. Uh, but then I'll like put it in a Sega and keep refiring it and messing with it to see if I can coax a new level of spirit out of it. And, you know, the more times you refire porcelain, the glassier it becomes, Um, especially what I love to do is uh, bombard it with sodium at very, very high temperatures. And that sodium actually starts stealing silica particles and forming sodium silicate, which which is is a glass. Um, And so by returning again and again to the kiln and and the 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 glass like nature increases every time you do it and so 
yeah, it's, it's, it's madness, it's high risk. But, you know, I'm in a cycle of... You're like the Elon Musk of pottery. It's high risk. <laughs> Things <laughs> blow up. Oh, but absolutely. But it just goes forward. Like yeah, yeah. You know, because people are only going to remember your best tile. <laughs> yeah. Now I was going to say, you know, those 25,000 great tiles... <laughs> you know, they, no one says that. They go, I oh, saw this tile and like it just sticks out in my memory. And it's like, so people's headspace, you know, they, they, they only have room for the best. Yeah. And, and so it's not about making a whole lot of good tiles. It's making, it's making one. Amazing design. Yeah. Cool, and uh, just, uh, lost the track a bit now. Mm. So, uh, and then now in the stage we are now, where are you? Is there some kind of thing? Oh yeah, no, I want to talk about this thing. I saw once, mm. I think also on YouTube. Yeah. Um, the Indian way, they fire their, their ceramics in fires, mm. like very naturally. This is one of the things I like about this. It's so natural and kind of organic. Mm. Um, I think you've done something like that quite recently where you fired of natural fire so you? so we 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 fire uh we've got a wacky process it's completely bonkers we fire inside seashells um and that's uh for a number of reasons we we 3d printing things and we can use the seashell uh as our print medium so the pieces like bone china is made of bone we'll be making shell china and there's something wonderful about a non-mined you know there's a big movement to wild clay uh, i'm pioneering wild glazes and uh and wild chinas and it's like, about like Belleville chinas well wild, wild china <laughs> i'm talking about different china uh, different china my explain, china. explain the china sorry quickly so uh, what happened was um, China, the, the country, had a monopoly on porcelain. And so the emperor, basically, if you were making porcelain in China and you weren't working for the imperial pottery, you were put to death. So essentially, he had this monopoly on porcelain. No one else in the world knew how to make porcelain. And this was at a stage where people were eating off plates that were earthenware and crazed and housing an enormous amount of bacteria in these cracks. And so people spent their life vomiting and um, whistling through their bottoms. And it was really a rough time if you were a latrine worker because uh, things weren't pleasant. You're and busy, <laughs> busy, busy. And then what happened was uh, porcelain hit the scene, and people stopped being reinfected by their by their plate that they were eating off. And um, suddenly, these people they felt really good, and and their bodies were able to absorb nutrients properly, and they weren't always sick and people honestly believed that porcelain made you immortal because they felt so good. If you've spent 50 years of your life feeling really like shit. dodgy and suddenly you're eating of porcelain plates and you feel great, you feel better than you felt at, at 70 than what you felt at 20. And so these people, like 70-year-olds, felt that they were young and, and healthy. And this was just crazy. That then meant that many people, there was a porcelain mania. People in the West had to have porcelain. And so the only place they could get it was from the imperial potteries in China. And he refused to accept payment in anything other than silver. So he was draining the world's silver into China, and it was this trade imbalance that was really, really concerning. Enter uh, every aristocratic family across Europe and England employed their best alchemists to develop a clay that mimicked porcelain. 
And so what they eventually did was, um, in these experimentations, somebody tried adding 90% bone ash. It, it was actually a miscalculation. He meant to add two ounces and he added two pounds. Um, well, he instructed his assistant, but he, he somehow committed some sort of spoonerism or muddled his words. And um, So as a result, uh, what happened was two pounds were added instead of two ounces and bone ash is a flux. But in this instance, there was so much flux and so little other material that bone ash is stable by itself. It's only in the presence of the, of the sil silica that it, it fluxes the silica and causes the glass to form. So basically what this created was a wall that was sort of in, entirely calcium with tiny amounts of silica in between that melted and gripped everything and pulled it together and hence the birth of bone china this mm. substance which you know he had predicted would be a glass uh, a, a, a pool of glass turned out to actually have rigid walls survive the firing and able to accept a glaze um not very good with thermal shock that's why the british always add the milk first to your teacup and then the tea so it 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 has become something that has affected us even though we don't have uh, bone china teacups anymore because now porcelain is so widely used um people still say oh milk first Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Hmm? I thought it was fashion, so there's actually a practical reason why it's not. Right. Technical reason, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Already this is an amazing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And we about to embark on uh, 3D printing of uh, burner nozzles. We're going to be 3D printing whole rooms as well. Uh, I'm working on a technology uh, where we print the house, we print the insulation, we print the burners. It's it's really is like quite a um, exciting project for me because um, ever since age 16, I heard about a fired clay house in India in the town of Oroville, Pondicherry. Uh, and later I made a pilgrimage to go and look at this house and absolutely loved this house and wanted to build one myself uh, and bought land in Bathurst, Salem and Choda. And even um, in in the process, um, built uh, a cob house up to roof height. Um, the real dream is to work with fire and fire a clay house. So holding thumbs so to say i like the ambition fantastic yes right that'll be amazing yeah <laughs> have a bit of an africa band party around it maybe well at least a marshmallow eating competition <laughs> at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah marshmallow sponsor <laughs> <laughs> so where can uh, people come and, uh, for those who don't know, the people are watching the podcast, uh, where must they come to check your stuff out and speak to you? Cool. So to speak to me, I'm usually at Montebello Design Center in Newlands. Uh, I also have the John Bauer Pottery Studio and B&B where people come and do uh, creative residencies, whether you're wanting to make pottery or write books or um, write books or... Um, uh, paint, um, you know, just send us a proposal of what you want to do and we will do our best to accommodate you. Our B&B has five rooms, so there will be other people there as well. Often the people there are not artists, but medical tourists, um, because we are very close to fertility clinics and the hospitals. So, yeah, it's a wacky, wacky, wacky world. And I am... Wacky, a bit wacky as well. I'm a bit wacky. Uh, I'm blessed to be in this wacky world. Um, where can people find me? And then 111 Loop Street, you can go look at the facade of that building that I've tiled 
up to that height. And if you're wanting your building tiled, uh, whether it's in the city or, or rurally or just somewhere like your home or your kitchen, your splashback or your floor or your ceiling, there is nothing more fun than having your house tiled in various artifacts bought from antique shops, turned into porcelain tiles, and then... It's also yacht-friendly. Oh, tight. very, yeah. Put it on yachts. Yeah. And big, tall skyscrapers, it mm -hmm. can go mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm, I'm running, my accommodation finishes at the end of May, so if I mm -hmm. come up with a book proposal, I can, mm -hmm. I can come mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me ideas, please. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, if you are wanting uh, Chris to come and tile parts of your... Uh, building uh, what what creates uh, you know if, if I'm co-sponsoring the project uh, it needs to be a high visibility uh, piece where people can access it just arrive look at it and leave um, but if if you sponsoring it if you paying then you know it's up to you Correct. Yeah. Is there any other stories you want to tell or add, or do you think uh, we've done a little mini podcast? I think. Um, I'm just going to reset that camera. Yeah. So I, I do love inventing and solving problems. So if you have a problem that you need solved, I absolutely love generating solutions. So throw them my way. I mean, you can send them to me on WhatsApp. You can DM me on Facebook. Um, and I know a lot of people because, you know, I'm thoroughly out there. So let's make the world a better place. Let's help people be more creative and let's make it all happen. Absolutely. And please go subscribe to Free Wild World on YouTube and check out this podcast. I would say in maybe three days time it should be out. Cool. So Free Wild out. World. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, John. That was amazing. Cool. Thanks, man. Sure. Cool. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. <laughs>